Good morning, Bedford View Methodist Church family. Once again, welcome to our Sunday service. Today is the 31st of January. It's our covenant service, a time as Methodists where we remember our covenant with God. And also it is a communion service. So I'm hoping that you will enjoy this service, this time of covenant. No, it's the first covenant that we are not a church, but it still means a lot in our Christian journey. So friends, let us then begin with our call to worship. And our call to worship this morning is Psalm 111, verses 1 to 5. Our call to worship this morning, Psalm 111, verses 1 to 5. Praise the Lord. I will exalt the Lord with all my heart in the counsel of the upright and in the assembly. Great are the works of the Lord. They are pondered by all who delight in them. Glorious and majestic are his deeds and his righteousness and yours forever. He has caused his wonders to be remembered. The Lord is gracious and compassionate. He provides food for those who fear him. He remembers his covenant forever in Jesus' name. Amen. Friends, let us light the peace candle. We light this candle this morning to remember that you, O Lord, you are the light of the world and you are the light in our own lives. So as we come to celebrate covenant service, God, I pray that may your light shine in our lives and may your light lead our path and may your light direct us in everything that we do. So bless this service, guide this service. Be the light on all the people that are watching this service. I pray all these things in the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. So friends, I'm going to hand over to TK to lead us with our covenant prayers. Amen. Good morning, friends. And before we go into our covenant prayers, as this is our family service, allow me to take this opportunity to explain to the little ones, my children, the youth, who might not know the significance of this service. Well, a covenant service is a service where we renew our relationship with God. And so this morning, we celebrate coming together as a family, as, as, a, as a Christian community, to come and give our lives to God and recommit ourselves to being a nation of God. And so that's why it is so significant that we have this service. And so boys and girls, young people, today if you ever wondered why it's, it is so important to renew our covenant with God, the importance is that we bond ourselves to, into a relationship with God. Today marks and starts a journey where we recommit ourselves as a Christian community to God, saying that we are God's people and God is our God. And so we come this morning, therefore, to do just that, to renew our relationship with God. And so family, boys and girls, mothers and parents, let us come together in this moment of the covenant. And so join me in the covenant prayers. God made a covenant with the people of Israel, calling them to be a holy nation, chosen to bear witness to his steadfast love by finding delight in the law. The covenant was renewed in Jesus Christ our Lord in his life, work, death, and resurrection. In all him, all people may be set free from sin and its power and united in love and obedience. In this covenant, God promises us new life in Christ. For our part, we promise to live no longer for ourselves, but for God. We meet, therefore, as generations have met before us to renew the covenant which bonds them and binds us to God. Let us then seek forgiveness for the sin by which we have denied God's claim upon us. Let us pray. God of mercy, hear us as we confess our sins for the sins that has made us slow to learn from Christ, reluctant to follow him and afraid to bear the cross. Lord, have mercy. Lord, forgive. For the sin that has caused the poverty 
of our worship, the formality and the selfishness of our prayers, our neglect of fellowship and the means of grace, and our hesitating witness for Christ. Lord, have mercy. Lord, forgive. For the sin that has led us to misuse your gifts, invade our responsibilities, and fail to be good stewards of your creation, Lord, have mercy. Lord, forgive. For the sin that has made us unwilling to overcome evil with good, tolerant of injustice, quick to condemn, and selfish in sharing your love with others, Lord, have mercy. Lord, forgive. And so, brothers and sisters, friends, we come into a moment of solitude prayer, a moment of silence as we reflect on the sins that we have done intentionally and unintentionally. And so let's take this moment in silence as we reflect on that. Amen. And so may we say this prayer together. Have mercy on me, O God, in your constant love. In the fullness of your mercy, blunt out my offense. Wash away all my guilt and cleanse me from my sin. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Give me the joy of your help again and strengthen me with a willing spirit. Amen. Friends, let us enjoy the opening song of today's service. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. For the Lord God Almighty reigns. God Almighty reigns. Hallelujah. Holy, holy are you, Lord God Almighty. Worthy is the Lord. Worthy is 
Amen. Thank you so much, TK, for leading us with prayers. So, friends, let us then continue once again with our covenant prayers. Let us pray. In the old covenant, God chose Israel to be his people and to obey his laws. Our Lord Jesus Christ, by his death and resurrection, has made a new covenant with all who trust in him. We stand within this covenant as we bear his name. On the one side, God promises in this covenant to give us new life in Christ. On the other side, we are pledged to live no more for ourselves, but for him. Today, therefore, we meet expressly, expressly as generations of our fathers have met to renew the covenant which bound them and binds us together. Please stand at home as I pray this prayer. Beloved in Christ, let us again claim for ourselves this covenant which God has made with his people and take the yoke, yoke of Christ upon us. To take his yoke upon us means that we are content and that he appoints, appoints us our places and work and that he himself be our reward. Christ has many services to be done. Some are easy Others are difficult. Some bring honor. Others bring reproach. Some are suitable for natural inclinations and material interest. Others are contrary to both. In some, we may please Christ and please ourselves. In others, we cannot please Christ except by denying ourselves. Yet, the power to do all these things is given us in Christ, who strengthens us, therefore, let us make this covenant of God our own. Let us give ourselves anew to him, trusting in his promises and relying on his grace. Amen. Please, friends, continue to stand as you pray this prayer with me, as it is written on the screen. Lord God, Holy Father, since you have called us through Christ to share in this gracious covenant, we take upon ourselves with joy the yoke of obedience and for love of you. Engage ourselves to seek and do your perfect will. We no longer our own, but yours. Amen. Please be seated, friends. As we come to this time, we'll read our scripture reading for this morning, which is Mark chapter 1 verses 21 to 28. Our reading for this morning, Mark chapter 1, verses 21 to 8. Jesus drives out an impure spirit. They went to Capernaum, and when the Sabbath came, Jesus went into the synagogue and began to teach. The people were amazed at his teaching because he taught them as one who had authority, not as the teacher of the law. Just then a man in their synagogue who was possessed by an impure spirit cried out, What do you want with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. Be quiet, Jesus said steadily. Come out of him. The impure spirit shook the man violently and came out of him with a shriek. The people were all so amazed that they asked each other, What is this? a new teaching, and with authority. He even gives orders to impure spirits, and they obey him. News about him spread quickly over the whole region of Galilee. Friends, this is the word of God, and thanks be to God. Amen. Let us pray. Father, I pray that this covenant service, you open our hearts and our minds, as we listen to your word, in Jesus' name. Amen. 
So friends, we find ourselves today coming to a very special moment in our Methodist history, our Christian journey, our Methodist ethos. And that is making a covenant with God. Remembering that we belong to God. Remembering that we need to obey the will of God. And also asking God to be our Lord and Savior as we gather today. So friends, we are just read from Mark chapter 1, verses 21 to 28. This is the journey of Jesus that is continuing in this, in this scripture. If you remember, Jesus has just called his disciples, gathered the men that he was about to work with, and now today is the beginning of the ministry of Jesus. So the journey begins. And what I love about this is that this journey of Jesus begins with what I call the healing ministry. Isn't that wonderful? That when Jesus starts his journey, the first thing that he does is the healing ministry. Yes, he went to the synagogue, as we are told. He started teaching. Started teaching in the synagogue. But in the midst of that teaching, we see then a first miracle taking place, which is the healing of the man with the impure spirit. And Luke, in, in Luke chapter 4, takes it further. He says, this man not only had impure spirit, but he was also demon-possessed. So you can read that parallel, this scripture, and also Matthew chapter 4, from 31 to 37, where Matthew, sorry, sorry, not Matthew, Luke. So Luke, Luke chapter 4. So this reading in Mark chapter 1, verses 21 to 28, is the same as the reading in Luke chapter 4, verses 31 to to 37. And then Luke adds that he not only had impure spirits, but he was also demon possessed. Hence, then, my theme for this morning is Jesus Christ, a healer with authority. Because now is the beginning of the healing ministry. And if you read, as you go down this chapter, you will see other healings taking place or other miracles taking place. So now he begins his healing ministry. And Mark in verse 22 tells us, he does not only heal, he heals with authority. He does not only teach, he teaches with authority. Hence, I've chose to have the theme I've just read to you. Jesus Christ, a healer with authority. What is authority? Why do I seem to emphasize this fact of authority? to add on this healing ministry. So, in essence then, friends, authority is the right someone has or is the right that an institution holds to enforce or to expect obedience from others. So, authority is the right that Jesus has to expect and to enforce authority, obedience from us. So therefore, when he teaches with authority, when he heals with authority, in other words, he's enforcing obedience from us, his followers. For us to remember that Jesus has authority above everything that is alive, above everything that is on this earth and also in heaven. So what is it then that we can learn from this story? As a good Methodist preacher, especially... On the covenant service, allow me to suggest three points that we can learn from this story. One is that I've mentioned Jesus teaches with authority. So the first thing that we are introduced to in this scripture is the teaching of Jesus, and not only the teaching, but the teaching that he does with authority. Listen to what Mark says, verse 21 to 22. So as they went to Capernaum, and, and when, when the Sabbath came, so it was a Sabbath day, Jesus went to the synagogue and began to teach. So it was Sabbath. So he went to the synagogue and began to teach. And as he was teaching, he says, the people were amazed at his teachings because he taught them as one who had authority, not as the teachers of the law. So Mark at this moment, he does not push the point that he has authority. He says he taught as one who has authority. 
So he's suggesting that there's a difference in the teaching of Jesus. He does not teach like other teachers of the law. He does not teach like other rabbis because remember, that's what the rabbis and the teachers of the law would do in the synagogue. They will teach people according to the scriptures like I'm doing. When I preach, when I teach as your minister, I teach according to the word of God. But Jesus teaches differently. He teaches with authority. Why does he teach with authority? Because Jesus is the word himself. Jesus knows what he's talking about. Jesus lives what he's talking about. So he knows the word. Remember, let me read it to you. John chapter 1. Remember the words from John chapter 1 when they speak about Jesus. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. That's who Jesus is. Jesus is the word. Jesus was there from the beginning. Everything was created through him. That's why he's got this authority. That's why he teaches with authority. Therefore, in other words, Jesus is the Lord. So when you read the word of God, remember that. You're reading the life of Christ. You get to understand who Jesus is. You get to live and understand his teachings. That's why he's got authority. Remember Philippians chapter 2, verse 10 to 11, when Paul says that at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow in heaven and on earth and under earth, and every tongue shall confess that Jesus is the Lord to the glory of God the Father. That's why he's teaching with authority, because he's the Lord, because he's God. So it's like he was going there to remind them and say, listen to the story of my life. Listen to who I am. Listen to me. He didn't even have to open the scriptures, the scrolls, the book of the law. He didn't even have to do that because he knew it by heart. Because the word is him. That's why he teaches with authority. And secondly, friends, we can learn from here that Jesus has authority over Satan and the uncleanness of this world or the darkness of this world. Or maybe, let me put it like this, Jesus has authority over Satan and the darkness of this world. So as he was teaching, then, then Mark says in verse 23 to 24, just then a man in their synagogue who was possessed by the impure spirit, cried out. And Luke goes to further say, not only impure spirit, by demon as well. Cried out, what do you want with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are. You are the Holy One of God. He's got power and authority over Satan and darkness to the point that Satan fears Jesus. Satan is scared of Jesus. Darkness fears Jesus. Darkness is scared of Jesus. Demons fear Jesus. Demons are scared of Jesus. The devil fears Jesus. The devil is scared of Jesus. Excuse me. That's what we learned here. That the devil has no power. He goes further, Jesus goes further to show that I don't respect you, Satan. I don't respect you, darkness. I don't respect you, evil. Friends, we must never respect darkness. We must never respect evil. We must never respect Satan. We must always rebuke Satan. As those who believe as Christian on this covenant service, I want to remind you that our purpose and our job and our calling is to rebuke the impure spirit, is to rebuke the devil, is to rebuke Satan, not to be friends with the devil. You see, the world is in this mess today because we are in the same bed with, the same, with Satan. The world is in this mess today 
because we smile with the devil. But, but our job and our calling is to rebuke those spirits. Whenever we see injustice, we must rebuke injustice. Whenever we see abuse, we must rebuke abuse. Whenever we see pe- wrongdoings, we must speak against wrongdoings. Whenever we see violence and crime, speak against violence and crime. That's what it means to rebuke darkness. When we have corrupt leaders, we must speak against corruption. That's what it means to rebuke darkness. Friends, I remember times where the Methodist Church would stand for injustice and speak against injustice, speak against evil doings, speak against the government. Do we do have those leaders now in our church? I don't know. You answer that question. So we must remember that Jesus had authority over Satan in the darkness of this world. He says to Satan, he says to the demon, he says to the impure spirit, I like how Jesus responds and, and, and addresses the evil. He says, be quiet. Be quiet because you have no power over me. I'm going to tell you what to do. You're not going to tell me what to do. Be quiet. Now that you know who I am, because friends, again, the scripture reminds us that even demons, even Satan, even evil spirit, they know who Jesus is. That's why they fear him. They say he's the Holy One of God. They say he's Jesus of Nazareth. So, so, so before we claim and proclaim that we know Jesus, always remember this, even the evil spirit know who Jesus is. It's more, not more about knowing who he is. Our religion is not here, it's here. It's about believing in him. The devil know who Jesus is, but the devil does not believe in him as the Lord and Savior. So therefore, we must not end in knowledge like the devil Because knowledge won't send us to heaven. Knowledge won't save our lives. Knowledge won't save our souls. But believing in him will save our lives. Believing in him will save our souls. Believing in him will take us to eternal life. Always remember that, friends. He says, be quiet. And and the Bible says, he said it sternly. He said it with authority. He said it with force. He said it with conviction. Oh Lord, I love this. He says, be quiet. Come out of him. Jesus does not beg the devil. Jesus does not beg the impure spirit. Jesus does not beg the demon. Jesus does not beg Satan. He says, come out of him. Now, come out of him. And the Bible says, the impure spirit shook the man violently. So, so the devil didn't just want to give up easily. I guess that's what this is telling us. He didn't want to give up easily, but he knew that he's going to give up anyway. Because he shook the man, as the Bible says. And then the impure spirit came out. Because why? Why did the impure spirit come out? Because of the conviction that Jesus had. Because of the authority that Jesus had. Because he stood there. I just have this picture in my mind. In the synagogue. Jesus standing in front as I stand here this morning. Jesus standing in front in the synagogue. And the man standing right in front of him in the synagogue. And Jesus looking at him face to face. Facing the devil face to face. The man himself had done nothing wrong. He was unfortunate that he was full of the impure spirit because we don't find anything in the scripture that said it was his fault. No. The problem was the impure spirit in him. So Jesus looking at him straight in the eyes. And whilst, because remember, the Bible says it is not this man who acknowledges, but the impure spirit that acknowledges who Jesus is. So the impure spirit of the demon says, I know who you are. Why are you here? Are you here to destroy us? You are Jesus of Nazareth, the son of God. Jesus says, you be quiet. You shut up. I tell you now, you shut up and listen to me. Because friends, that's how we deal with the evil spirit. That's how we deal with injustice. We do not smile. We do not mince our words. We say, you shut up out. You shut up right now. Listen to me. You come out of this man right now, right away. And the evil spirit left the man. That's how we deal with things that are wrong. We face them straight and we say it like it is. 
Yes, I know when you are honest and straightforward, sometimes you, you gain enemies. But better you gain enemies on this earth and gain, rather you, sorry, rather you lose friends because of your truth and gain Christ because of your truth. Remember those words. And the evil spirit came out. Lastly, friends, one thing we can learn from this is our response then to, to this. What is our response to this authority, which is my last point? Our response is to spread this good news I've spoken about. Our response is to spread. This is how Mark closes this chapter. He says, after all had happened, news about Jesus spread quickly over the whole region of Galilee. News about Jesus, news about what he had done, news about what had happened spread quickly throughout Judea. That is our response then, friends. Our response to this authority, our response to this teaching, our response to this healing is to spread the good news quickly to our community. We go out there and share with people. We go out there and evangelize. We go out there and tell people who Jesus is. We go out there and remind our people of what Jesus is capable of doing. Now, it is up to you and me then to tell people about this good news. It is up to you and me then to spread the word because people need to hear this news. People need to hear the word. People need to understand the word. People need to be saved in Jesus' name. Amen. Father, I give you thanks and praise for your word. I pray, Father, that your word will convict us. Your word will change us. At this covenant service, God, that will learn more about you. As we come to this time of communion, prepare our hearts and our minds. In Jesus' name, amen. Friends, we come to this time of communion. And I want to encourage you, as you know the custom, you cover the elements with a white cloth. So please remove the white cloth as we begin with our communion. And as you know, friends, you will respond where it is written bold or is written green on the screen as we carry on with our communion. Let us begin. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. Father, all-powerful and ever-living God, it is indeed right, it is our joy and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks and praise through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. You created all things and made us in your own image. When we had fallen into sin, you gave your only Son to be our Savior. He shared our human nature and died on the cross. You raised him from the dead and exalted him in your right hand in glory, where he lives forever to pray for us. Through him, you have sent your holy and life-giving spirit and made us your people, a royal priesthood, to stand before you, to proclaim your glory, and to celebrate your mighty acts. And so with all the company of heaven, we join in an unending hymn of praise. Let's say it together. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We praise the Lord God, King of the universe, through our Lord Jesus Christ, who on the night in which he was betrayed, he took the bread, he gave thanks, and he broke it. And he gave it to his disciples, saying, take this and eat it. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, we are told in the scriptures that he took the cup of wine, he gave thanks, and he gave it to them, saying, drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. Friends, let's say it together. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Therefore, Father, it is commanded us we do this in remembrance of him. And we ask you to accept our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Grant that by the power of the Holy Spirit, we who receive these gifts of bread and wine, may share in the body and the blood of Christ. Make us one body with him. Accept us as of ourselves to be a living sacrifice 
and bring us with the whole creation to a heavenly kingdom. We ask this through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Friends, let's say it together. Through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and the glory be given to you, Almighty Father, from all who dwell on earth and in heaven throughout all ages. Amen. Friends, as a reminder that the bread we break is the sharing in the body of Christ. Let's say it together. Though we are many, we are one body because we all share in one loaf. Friends, let us then pray the prayer of humble access. Lord, we come to your table trusting in your mercy and not in any goodness of our own. We are not worthy even to gather up the crumbs under your table. But it is your nature always to have mercy and on that we depend. So feed us with the body and the blood of Christ, Jesus Christ, your son, that we may forever live in him and he in us. Amen. The body of Christ broken for you. Take and eat. Amen. The blood of Christ shed for you. Take and drink. Amen. Amen. So friends, I'm going to invite you then during this time as families, if you're on your own like me, you will do as I've done, the body of Christ broken for you, take and eat, amen. The blood of Christ shed for you or poured out for you, take and drink, amen. So I'm going to give you this time then, then if you are a family, I'm going to ask one of the family members to give the bread and the grape juice. Then when we are done, we'll do the final prayer. So please, I'm going to give you enough time. Take this time slowly, quietly, as families or by yourself as you take this communion. Because this is a holy moment, a time where we remember what Christ has done for us. So friends, enjoy the feast and enjoy the body and the blood of Christ. Amen. Amen. So when you're done as families, or as you, if, if you're done, you're having this communion by yourself, please take the white cloth that I've asked you to take away during the beginning, I mean beginning of the communion service, and cover the elements once again before we say our closing prayer. So before our closing prayer, please cover the elements, and then when you're done, we'll come to the time of the closing prayer. And then I'm going to request that you stand as we say this prayer. Our closing prayer, please stand. Let's pray together. We thank you, Lord, that you have fed us in this sacrament, united us with Christ, and given us a foretaste of a heavenly banquet prepared for us all. Amen. Please be seated. So, Father, I give you thanks and praise, Lord Jesus, for this time. Now, I pray that you prepare our hearts and minds as we are about to make a covenant prayer that will bind us here on earth as your people with you in heaven. In Jesus' name, amen. So friends, please stand once again. And now we're going to do the covenant prayer, the covenant prayer, as you all know it. And then I'm going to ask as you stand, you will, re you will read with me our covenant prayer as it appears on the screen. Let us pray. I am no longer my own, but yours. Put me to do what you will. Rank me with whom you will. Put me to doing. Put me to suffering. Let me be employed for you or laid aside for you. Exalted for you or brought low for you. Let me be full. Let me be empty. Let me have all things let me have nothing. I freely and wholeheartedly yield all things to your pleasure and disposal. And now, glorious and blessed God, Father, 
Son, and Holy Spirit. You are mine. I am yours. So be it. And the covenant now made on earth, let it be ratified in heaven. Amen. So friends, it is my hope and prayer that you understand what you have just prayed. This is our covenant for 2021. 2020, 2021 have not been easy years because of COVID-19. But now we've prayed this prayer and made this covenant with God. Let us then be obedient to the will of God as we move forward. In Jesus' name, amen. Friends, please enjoy the closing song, Amazing Grace. Amen. Saved a wretch like me I once was lost but now I'm found Was blind but now I see It was grace that taught my heart and grace my fears relieve How precious did that grace appear The hour I first believed My chains are gone I've been set free my God, my Savior has ransomed me And like a flood His mercy reigns Unending love, amazing grace The Lord has promised good his word my hope secures He will my shield and portion be As long as life endures My chains are gone I've been set free my God, my Savior has ransomed me And like a flood His mercy reigns Unending love, amazing grace My chains are gone I've been set free my God, my Savior, has ransomed me. And like a flood, His mercy reigns. Unending love, amazing grace. The earth shall soon dissolve. Snow and the sun forbear to shine. But God, who calls me here below, will be forever mine. Will be. Amen. So friends, I want to give thanks to you for uh, 
watching this covenant service and communion service. I hope you've enjoyed the service. My apologies, friends. I'm sure you've heard throughout the service. I'm currently struggling with flu, but I want to promise you it's not COVID-19. I went for testing on Monday before the birth of the child because we were told at Lingsfield Hospital that Nandi can't deliver the baby until we are both tested and we both tested negative. So at least I know that is uh, out of the picture, but I've been struggling with flu since then. So I just want to apologize uh, for that during the service. I'm sure you've heard that I was struggling here and there. But I hope, in spite of that, you've enjoyed the service. And also, you're going to tune in next week and watch us as we continue with our online services. Until we hear from the president on the way forward, we will respect the laws of the country and will continue to do the online services. And secondly, to give thanks to those who've uh, responded to the call for the food pantry and did bring some food and deposit some money. And I just, just want to continue to ask you to do so in helping us uh, in terms of the food pantry, clothing pantry, as there are people who are in need out there. And also a reminder that Soup Kitchen will start again Thursday next week. So if you know any people that want to volunteer on Soup Kitchen, they can be part of that ministry. It will start next Thursday. From 10, you can come and help with cooking and preparing the food. And then at 11, we dish out the food for one hour and then people go home. There won't be any contact. People stand outside. We stand by the gate and then we just hand the food to them to avoid and also to stick with the regulations. So remember that as well. And also check our bulletin for our financial uh, report. Things are not easy for anyone, so things are a bit tight financially. So I want to encourage people, you know, that to continue to give generously to our church as things have been tight. I'm sure on the 3rd of February, when we have our annual society meeting, you will see with the budget and the expenses how tight things are moving forward. And I know it's not easy for everyone because of this COVID-19. People have lost jobs and their income. So we keep praying for our people that God will continue to provide. So friends, may God bless you. May God be with you. Please stand as we pronounce the benediction. Please raise your hands. Let's say it together. And now, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all, now and forevermore. Amen. May God bless you. Have a blessed week. In Jesus' name. Amen.